The running theme with this collection of 1940s cookbooks is the illusion of variety. There's hundreds of recipes, but only one good one for half a dozen weird combinations with no real substance. Today I'm going to try three things. Jack Horner sandwich, a ham and prune sandwich, and a frosted sandwich loaf that is still kind of popular in the holidays. Start with a can of mushroom soup. Now the original recipe calls for a whole can, but I didn't want 10 sandwiches. So cut it down to 3 tablespoons is all you need. Throw that in a bowl and then you're going to take some leftover ham. I had some available and just finally dice it up. Just eyeball enough because you only need two tablespoons worth for one sandwich, give or take. And then the recipe calls for diced chicken. I had some leftover as well, so you need a little bit more of this, quarter cups worth. Get that all finely diced and throw it in the bowl. And that's pretty much all it calls for. No seasoning, it just can get mixed up and there. Take a couple pieces of bread and butter them and throw it on. Right off the bat, it doesn't look too appetizing, almost like cat food, but we'll press on, get it all on there, and there is the Jack Horner sandwich. Let's cut that up and get a cross section, just like a restaurant would. Beautiful. As far as the taste test goes, you know, these three things aren't terrible ingredients. They were lacking, you know, they were pretty salty. You could have used some maybe cheese and some lettuce might have helped that out. But let's just move on to the ham and prune sandwich. Start out with some prunes, a cup of water, some orange juice. You just got to stew those for about half an hour until you get this little bit of syrup in there. They're a lot softer. Now you can see I have 10 prunes here. I ended up doing the full recipe on this one uh, with the other ingredients. I calls for deviled ham to be used. I didn't want half a can of deviled ham left in my fridge. So here's some Underwood ham. We'll throw that in. I'm not gonna bore everyone with the exact measurements because I don't think anyone's ever gonna make this, but I had a couple tablespoons of ketchup, a couple teaspoons of diced pickles, parsley, onion, and that's it. Well, Tabasco sauce. Mix that up and now that looks like cat food. Alright, so now we just need to butter a couple pieces of bread again and throw on our ham and prune filling. This, this one actually has lettuce on it. Let's see if that's a vast improvement from the other one. Give that a cut and there. Fit for a king. Or maybe somebody in my house will enjoy it. Now this one was every bit as bad as it looked. Um, there's too much going on with the ketchup, the, the already spiced deviled ham, and the soft prunes. It, it was just now for the frosted sandwich loaf, we got to work on three fillings. Start by boiling four eggs for about 10 minutes, and then start chopping up some celery for the chicken salad filling. We need about a cup of celery, and some green pepper. You don't need too much of that. Chop that as fine as you want it, and throw in a tablespoon, and then a cup of chopped chicken. Just uh, break it up a little finer, season some salt and pepper, and a few tablespoons of mayo. And that just needs to be mixed. I guess more than a few tablespoons, like four tablespoons of mayo. Mix that up, and then just uh, wrap that up and store it in the fridge. For the egg salad filling, you need some diced pickles, and then you can take your eggs once they're cooled, chop them up however you like. Whenever I make egg salad, I just kind of do this. This is my little method. Um, once that's done, add in the quarter cup of pickles, and then the same amount of mayo will work. And then just give that a mix, get it all nice and put together, and then just wrap it and store it in the fridge, just like all the other ones. Finally, the pimento filling. They're a lot harder to find these days, pimentos, but I found some fire-roasted sweet peppers, which are basically the same things. Chop those up real nice, and then in a bowl, 
three tablespoons of flour, half a teaspoon of mustard, half a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Get that all in your bowl, mix together, and then add in one cup of water, half a cup of white vinegar. And then lastly, one beaten egg that just gets thrown in there. You can actually do this in a saucepan. I was following the recipe a little too closely, just made one more dirty dish. And then this can get cooked on medium heat, stirring constantly. That egg in there will set if you don't temper it properly, which normally I wouldn't do it like this, but following the recipe. To that, once it thickens, add in three tablespoons of butter and your cup of pimentos. Keep on cooking that until it thickens up. It's not going to thicken crazy, but there you go. Pimento filling. Wrap that up and it needs to cool completely in the fridge, probably over these fillings can all be done ahead of time. Finally, the uh, loaf part of this, we need one loaf of bread unsliced. I just baked my own bread to do this. And then it needs to be trimmed. You need to take off the sides, each end piece, just enough that you want it. Uh, you gotta make it form a rectangle. And uh, I didn't end up cutting off the bottom, but then afterwards you need to get four slices. Turn it into four lengthwise slices, just like this. Start with the first slice, some mayo on it. And then I put on the first filling was uh, chicken salad because, you know, this was, it had the most structural integrity. You don't want to put like egg salad on the bottom because the weight of the whole thing is just going to kind of squish it, is what I figured at least. Now, if you uh, kind of cut it as weird like mine, so even you can use the fillings kind of build it up in places where it isn't even try to fix it up next I did the egg salad because it had more integrity than the pimento filling which didn't turn out as thick as I thought it would so had a lot of pimento filling left over here um, and then finally the last piece all all slices get meal. cream cheese filling just one softened block of cream cheese and add in some milk to thin it out. Now I think I used about three tablespoons, maybe a little bit more in the end. Just whip it until it is spreadable. And then you can add it on the loaf. And you want to get every side of this thing covered up. You should have just enough cream cheese spread to get it all frosted. Now uh, I shouldn't have made it on this decorative plate. The sides kind of went up. I had a hard time cutting the bottom. So I, I showed that. I don't know why I left that footage in. Now I tried it again on a cutting board. Uh, it was, you know what, I think my knives need to be sharp and hard to get through. But anyways, got that up onto a plate and finally the taste test of this thing. First I tried every, every filling on its own with a little bit of bread. The chicken salad was alright, you know, just a basic chicken salad. The egg salad was better than I thought. I have my own way of making it. This was that mental filling. Actually, it was it was very vinegary, but it wasn't terrible. Now all three things together, it you know these were all not not bad. Not as bad as the last two sandwiches. It it wasn't terrible. And for the sake of not wasting food, I ended up eating this whole loaf over the course of a day or so. So there we go. In the end. Cross the globe and kind of redeem the whole thing. Please remember to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.